know there's a lot of scientific research out there and you can frequently find conflicting studies. So we're going to make this really simple today. And um, if you could explain to us how we're going to conduct the experiment to show this process. So we're hoping to prove this hypothesis that we all have that by engaging the horse's core that we are in fact affecting the position of the uh, vertebrae relative to one another and specifically the dorsal spinous processes. And so what we're going to do on a horse that's standing still in a radiology room, which is obviously not the model that we see every day when a horse is ridden, but it's the best we can do and it's a very controlled environment. The horse will be standing square and we're going to take radiographs conducted in a lateral medial fashion of the back with a horse in a neutral head and neck position without any engagement of the core. And then we're going to repeat those same radiographs by encouraging the horse to engage its, co its core by asking the horse to tilt its pelvis and lift its back. Ready? I get Oh man, good girl. The study we have up here, the top row is the neutral position. You can see the spacing of the dorsal spinous processes. And on the lower row of images here, we have the images with the flexion of the back. And you can see pretty significant clear change in the spacing between the spinous processes, which is most pronounced in the mid thoracic spine. This is really pretty cool. Because the neutral position, we have 1.1 centimeter, and then in the flex position, we almost have two centimeters, so almost a double in the space. And if you look at this one here, it's completely closed, and then it opens up to 1.3 centimeters in the, in the flexed position. So, I mean, that's significant. And what I find so interesting is that the most significant change that we're seeing in the you know, separation of the dorsal spinous processes is right where the saddle would go. And so that's where the implications for riding are, are huge. And we've seen now with radiographic proof, this mechanism is very, very powerful. And that in fact, the spaces between these bones in some instances will even double.